Hey there. Uh, I'm doing something a little new for me anyway. Uh, on my Tormach personal CNC 1100, um, I got an order for 30 pieces of a spacer made out of 303 stainless steel. And I don't have a CNC lathe, so I decided I'd just uh, use my mill for making these parts. So, uh, as you can see, I've got uh, uh, facing and OD turning, half inch drill to poke a hole down the middle. Uh, I've got one, two rough, bore bar, uh, rough and a finished bore bar, and then a, a cutoff tool. And I've got my stock in the spindle and a little special side lock type holder that I made. And uh, these are the parts over here. So, I've had some success. I've made three pieces now without having to make any adjustments. Tolerances are plus or minus one thousandth on uh, all the all the features. I did make a few out of aluminum and a couple more out of stainless that uh, allowed me to get to this place but uh, this is what I put into the spindle. I decided that if I held it in the middle I could cut my st uh, wasted stock in half so basically I make one and then I flip it over and I make another one. So. I'll go ahead and start it up. See if uh, see if I can make another one <laughs> without any uh, catastrophes. Uh, one of the one of the tricks, one of the problems I had was trying to get coolant in a place where it could get up inside the holes. So I did uh, finally manage to come up with a coolant hose placement that. Uh, let me get coolant everywhere that I needed to so I don't have to adjust it anymore. Cycle time, I think probably around six minutes. And uh, probably I could speed it up a bit. But uh, right now I'm making good parts and I might try to speed things up a little bit later. So I'm just cutting the OD after having faced it off. Finishes are good, and again, I've made three parts now without having to adjust any of my tolerances. All my tool positions are just being defined in my work offset positions. I'd like to do probably some more things like this in the future, so whereas right now I'm just holding tool holders and vices and chucks, um, I'll probably make some kind of a, a block or something that lets me gang these tool holders up in a slightly more organized manner. come back and uh, highlight each tool as it goes. So the drill is about the depth, uh, about 1.1 inches deep, I think is the depth of that drill. I used a cobalt drill, knowing it would probably give me a little more tool life. Things are a little squeaky. I don't mind that. The doors are shut, the neighbors are not complaining. Uh, as long as my tool life isn't you know, hurt by the, by the shatter. I'm just using a regular drill cycle here, D73. It was just a little quick way to program it. I know back dragging the tool is probably not helping my tool life. But again, I will watch to see if tool life is a problem. If not, then uh, I'll let it Uh, 
the counter bore that goes on top of this part. The chips don't look hot. I found that the pecking cycle helped to break my chips up so I didn't have any chip wrapper. So that's the roughing bore bar. Now I'm just going to go down and uh, I do get a lot of chatter, but I actually am getting a really good surface finish at the finished pass. Just not sure there's a lot I can do to increase the, decrease the chatter on this stuff. The, the bore bars are just steel bore bars with an insert. I'd love to have a nice carbide bore bar, I think it would, or a heavy metal bore bar, but it's not something I have right now. That's going to come over and just uh, cut the part off and create a 45 degree chamfer. So I go in uh, as deep as the chamfer and then I come back and create the chamfer with the cutoff tool. A little chip wrap there sometimes. Hasn't really been a problem when it comes to uh, pushing the tool around or, or damaging my finish. So. Work. I'll leave it alone. So I, yeah, I don't know what you can see here, but I'm really get coolant on my camera. And there it is, just making the final pass. part drops down. Usually it just falls on that uh, way cover there. And let's see what I got. I'm way down here is a part. So, not focusing very well, but there's my stainless steel 303 stainless part. Again, I'm managing to hold tolerances uh, plus or minus one, but actually they're tighter than that. I haven't had a problem chasing tolerances around yet, and the finishes are nice. And everything's, you know, all the edges are broken except for the back one here, and uh, just hit that on some sandpaper. And uh, seems to be working pretty well. So, this is something I, uh, something I needed to make, and I don't have a CNC lathe, but if I can use my mill to make them, I'd like that. So, see you later. And uh, I guess one other note that is worth mentioning is that uh, I don't have a tool changer on this machine. So normally for multi-tool operations I've got to manually load the tool up, but in a case like this where I can just mount my tools on the table, uh, I can actually just go ahead and run these parts. And again, as long as I don't get any failures of my tooling, I have time to go ahead and cut the bar and put the little side hole that lets me uh, lets me control the, the height of the part and all is well.